Kate Griffin. Um, so you're at the panel, um, we're talking about the state of the left, especially that of the student and youth movement on the left. Um, what is the student movement doing? What, is it, well, what does it need to do and how are they gonna do it? Um, the first person that'll be speaking on this is Pat Forte. Um, Pat is, is currently a student at the New School, um, studying economics and organizing with SCS at the New School. <clears throat> so I'd like to begin with a quote from the March 22nd movement from uh, Paris in 1968. They were um, part of the movement that rose up in uh, May of 68. Some may be familiar with it. We're not preoccupied solely by, by problems specific to the university, rather with those of society. Only as a result of a calm, reasoned political analysis have we reached the conclusion that the only interesting change is a revolutionary change affecting society. As we are in the universities, we fight there, but we know that everything is interconnected. Our critique of the university can only result in a critique of society, hence the necessity to extend our action and to go beyond the university context. Well, that is the one of the topics of discussion of this panel, is that we are concerned with not building simply a student movement concerned only with issues as they relate to students, but rather with the creation of a revolutionary student movement. What do we mean by revolution? Well, by revolution we don't mean violence, chaos, a cataclysmic event, or an insurrection. Though revolutions have historically incorporated uh, uprisings and insurrections, it's not inherent in the meaning. What we mean by revolution is a fundamental transformation in a sphere or multiple, multiple spheres of social life. If we're clear in our understanding that in its totality, um, this society, all spheres of social life is unacceptable, then we require a social revolution, meaning a transformation in all spheres of social life. Well, what do we need to get there? Well, you don't get into a car expecting to end up in a desirable place. You have absolutely no idea what that desirable place looks like, where it is, or how to get there. That's pretty obvious to most people. So therefore, we need vision. We need an idea of this defining values and institutions of the society after capitalist, patriarchal, white supremacist, authoritarianism. So we need to have an idea of the direction in which we're going so that we can incorporate it into our movements and so that we you know, can actually construct a new society within the shell of the old. So <clears throat> as far as the left right now, um, to further expand upon the car analogy, um, what's horrible is that not only are we getting into a car with no idea of where we're going, um, how to get there, or what this place looks like, but we're drunk and blindfolded, uh, you know, <laughs> taking any random road that we see almost. Um, and that, I think that in order for us to reconstitute the left, to unite various sections of the left um, under, you know, a revolutionary program, that we need to have a clear idea of the direction in which we're going and move beyond simply um, reform struggles or resistance struggles, but move in the direction of incorporating all these various struggles as part of a revolutionary process to actually transform society we also need a as a whole. We, yes, we need, we need a car to fit everyone inside. <laughs> I think we can leave. Um, 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 so, yeah, so anyway, the road to victory is a bumpy one. There's going to be a lot of detours that we might have to take along the way. We might even discover some new you know, shortcuts. But I think the analogy works for this, that we, we need to have an idea of where we're going. We need it in order to move beyond the cynicism and hopelessness that has largely defined the experience of our generation, um, and that we need to actually have an idea of the institutions that will replace you know, capitalism and patriarchy and white supremacy and the authoritarian state with participatory, democratic, and egalitarian institutions. So how do we do this? That brings us to the question of dual power, that we need to build infrastructure, we need to build movement organizations that um, retain our members, that raise levels of commitment, and that simultaneously um, build alternative institutions and work within existing institutions to transform the structures of those. An example of this would be at the new school right now. Um, we're fighting for financial disclosure from our university. We're fighting to remove our university from the military industrial complex. and. Simultaneously, we're looking to transform the 
structures of the university to foster popular participation, self-management, and to begin moving towards a, a new type of university. Now obviously the gains that we may obtain are limited. Why? Because we're restricted by the market, we're restricted by capitalism, we're restricted by the conditions under which we function. Nonetheless, by having an idea of where we're going, by having an idea of how we're going to incorporate our values, the values and institutions that we uphold in the present, um, we can begin proving that there is an alternative, that we can structure society along different lines, and we can build popular power by raising levels of commitment, etc.